album review. That's not the intro though, roll it. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Channel's name is The Third Ernest. I'm Ernest Adiano the Third. Y'all guys are the third family. And family that's been around here, family that's subscribed, you know that we've never actually done an official album review. So Kanye just dropped some new music, highly controversial, just like Kanye is. So what better time to kick off our album reviews than with Jesus is King. Now Kanye has been known for quite some time to be a pretty polarizing figure, but when you put an album out like this, you're either gonna be on Kanye's side and love it, or you're gonna be against Kanye's side and hate it. So let's just go ahead and jump off into the review and see exactly whether or not I love the album or whether or not I hate the album. And regardless of what the album is about, whenever Kanye drops a new album, the first thing you're always gonna run to and the first thing you're always gonna jump to is production quality. When it comes to production, I would give this album 10 out of 10 easily. And regardless of what you feel about Kanye, you cannot deny the fact that the man is a musical genius. Now the reason I give this album a 10 in terms of production is because it has all the signs of classic Kanye, all the signs of the old Ye that we all miss, but all the signs of the new Ye that a lot of people either love or hate. And you can't fault the dude for sticking by his guns and wanting to sound the way that he sounds. We got the against the grain type of sound, avant-garde type of sound, going against what normal music is type sound that Yeezus was. We got nods to electronic music, we got nods to auto-tunes, singing with auto-tunes that 808s and Heartbreaks and Graduation had. We got soul samples that are reminiscent of old Ye from College Dropout and Late Registration. We got expansive, emotional, hard-hitting production, very large production sound, very technical production of My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. It's like he looked back on all of his previous albums and said, how can I combine everything that everybody loves about all the previous albums I've ever put out and combine it into one and put the message of Jesus on top of it. That's basically the first thing that I thought whenever I listened to the album all the way through for the first time was damn. This is Kanye like mid-season form right here, just doing the damn thing on the boards. Some powerful moments that made me step back, they made me rewind. The sonic rise and the drum beats in the choir and Salah, the second track on the album, I was like, ah, this is getting intense. The soul samples of Follow God. And then at the end of Follow God, the screen that leads right down into the calming presence of Closed on Sunday. And then the beat switch up of Closed on Sunday whenever the keyboard hits and he starts singing. Ooh, that one right there, I was like, oh, okay, okay. We came to play. And then obviously, you can't forget the entire 30, 45 seconds that is Kenny G solo, and then the beat drop right after Kenny G solo. And then the fact that I'm even talking about Kenny G on a Kanye West Jesus gospel album, the man is just a genius. There's no denying, 10 out of 10. But anybody that knows me and knows this channel is that we're not about the production only around here. If anything, the production is just to solidify the bars. The bars is what matters. And what is the lyrical quality of this album? To be honest, it's not his best work. And for the Christians or for the people that are liking this album because of the Christian thematic elements, I'm not talking about the subject matter. I'm talking about literally his technical skill of being a writer. It's not his best work. Salah, I think I'm pronouncing it right, but that track when it first started, like I was like, if the rest of this album is gonna sound like this from Ye, it's not gonna be great. That track started the entire album with a lot of one syllable rhyme schemes. I believe that if you're at this level of creativity, and if not only just at this level of creativity, if you're at the Kanye level, like you can't be coming at me with one syllable rhyme schemes. Won't be in bondage to any man, John 833. We the descendants of Abraham, ye should be made free. John 8.36, to who the son set free is free indeed. He saved a wretch like me. There's a reason why they call it a flow, is because the words flow, but this doesn't have that flow. I understand that he's quoting direct Bible verses, and I understand the fact that he's playing to the drum line of the track, but still, it just doesn't flow together. That's I, When I first heard the song, I was like, I hope the rest of the album is not like this because this is gonna be an unlistenable album. But I won't say the lyrics of the album aren't fire because there's definitely some fire moments on the track. I wrote down some of my favorite bars that have popped out at me. Obviously, there's bars that are very biblical based, so I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about bars that are just for that, just bars. So right here we got, I was looking at the gram and I don't even like likes. That's a bar. 
He said I was screaming at my dad and he told me that ain't Christ-like, but no one ever talks about when you being like Christ. That's a bar. People only talk about the negativity. No one ever talks about the positivity in the world. This isn't really a bar, but this is classic Kanye to like make this into a bar. Close on Sunday, you my Chick-fil-A. Only Kanye could pull that lyric off. Anybody else, everybody be like, that's mad corny. Only Kanye. No more living for the culture, we nobody's slave. That's a bar because that goes directly back to the album Yeezus where he's talking about new slaves. How we're the new slaves to entertainment, we're the new slaves to fashion and style, and we do what all these people say. Here he is saying the opposite, we're no longer gonna be new slaves. That's a bar. Switch your attitude, level up yourself, this, that different latitude. That's a bar because if you look on Kanye's like deaf poetry jam before he was anybody, before graduation came out, I think it was in between college dropout and graduation, he has like a flow on there where that directly comes from. He says your attitude determines your latitude. That's why I'm high as a motherfucker, fly as a motherfucker. The motherfucker you love to hate but can't because you love what I make. Now ain't that about a bitch and I'ma talk shit. That's classic Kanye lyricism right there. That's what I'm talking about. This album is missing that type of lyricism, that type of flow. Next bar, he says all these people mad at dude. This is for the people who it mattered to. If you're mad at me for putting out a gospel album, then this album ain't for you. It's all the people that are gonna be touched and moved by it. That's a bar. The Thai dollar sign hook on the feature is a bar. We began after the storm inside. And that could be tied as a direct line to Kanye's life because he had that storm inside him. But now that he actually found God and followed God and let that storm subside within himself, now he's a whole new man. That's a bar. And I could keep going on the list of bars that I found and I can make an entire completely separate video just about the bars that pertain to biblical references, but just know that there's bars within the album. So there's glimpses of Kanye being the writer that he once was and the writer that we know he can be. But I'd be very pressed to say that this is one of his best albums. If anything, this is like mid-level if you ranked his albums from first to last. So the bar side, I give like a six and a half out of 10. Next, we got the features. And the three features, the three biggest features that stand out to me are obviously gonna be one, that boy Kenny G on the saxophone, straight killing the solo. A couple of y'all out there were probably conceived of a Kenny G album or two at one point. That boy is smooth with it. But to put Kenny G and Clips on the same song? Clips is an old school in the game. Clips' two verses on the album were actually pretty fire. And then after his verses, you mix that with the smooth saxophone sound of Kenny G. And then after Kenny G's solo, we get the beat drop that Ye puts onto the track. Psh Son. The only problem I have with that specific song, and the song is Use This Gospel, and it's not even really a problem, it's just that I feel for Eclipse, because Clips came out the gates hot on fire on that track. But the song sounds very similar to Runaway, and that's a tall order for Clips to beat the feature of Pusha T on Runaway. Pusha T's Runaway verse might be one of the best on the entire My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy album. And there's some bomb features on that album, but either way, it's fire. And then Ty Dollar Sign on the Everything We Need hook. Ty Dollar Sign is like basically the new Nate Dogg. He's not at the icon level. He's not at like the great level of Nate Dogg is, but I don't think I've heard a bad feature. Or I don't think I've heard a bad hook from Ty Dollar Sign ever. So features wise, the album's not too heavy, but the features that are there, they're done with serious intention and that makes them stand out, that makes them feel purposeful. So features wise, I give the album like an eight out of 10, 8.5 out of 10. You know what, I might give it a nine out of 10 just cause the boy got Kenny G on the track, you know what I'm saying? Now lastly, you can't have Ye and you can't have Jesus in the same sentence without talking about subject matter controversy. Because Ye, in a lot of people's minds, is the last person that should be making a gospel album with his track record. He has a whole album entitled Yeezus. On the Yeezus tour, which I went to go see, the boy split a mountain and brought Jesus out. But at the same time, the dude also did a Rolling Stone cover back in like 05, 06, where he wore the crown thorn on the Rolling Stone cover, which someone can interpret easily as Kanye saying that he's the reincarnation of Jesus Christ. So there's a lot of controversy when it comes to the relationship that Kanye West has to this subject matter. A lot of people are wondering, is he using religion to make a profit? A lot of people are wondering, is he truly a man who's converted himself to God? And when it comes to those two questions, I have two things to say to that. I personally believe that he is a born again Christian. Everything that he has done within the past six months has led me to believe that. And number two, and more importantly than my own personal belief, is that who the fuck are you to judge? Who are you to put judgment on the fact that this boy wants to put out a gospel album? It's one of the things that he actually talks about in the album is that people who are die-hard devoted Christians, they gave him a lot of shit. They judged him pretty harshly for wanting to put out a gospel album and nobody helped him. Everyone kind of just turned their nose up to him. But who the fuck are you to do that? 
And I'm with Kanye on that stance. If you're someone who is a devoted follower of God, you should know that it's not your position to judge. You should know that the only person who can judge is the Almighty. If anything, you as a devoted and devout Christian should just say, praise be. We finally got another one on our side to fight the war of evil. We got a major face on our side. And if it turns out to be that he's not turned Christian, and if it turns out to be that Ye is using it for profit, if it turns out to be that Ye is not a newfound, a born again member of God's army, it's not your job to judge. It's your job to pray for him. So in my mind, there should be no controversy as to whether he is born again Christian or not. Born again follower of Jesus, because that's a conversation that he needs to have with God, not a conversation for you to butt your head into. But that's just me. But other than the controversy around the subject matter, it was more so the controversy around the genre of music. Is this truly a gospel album? I don't know. I don't listen to gospel music. So for the people that are big on gospel music or on Christian music, you tell me whether or not it's a gospel or Christian album. And a lot of people were hating on Kanye and hating on Kanye West fans because they were saying he's going to get all the credit. He's going to get all the Grammys and awards for a gospel album when there's been gospel rappers, Christian rappers, Christian artists that have been doing this for years that have been OGs in the game. That's true. But what I would say to that is they aren't Kanye f West. Kanye West is an icon. Kanye West has for a very long time been a trendsetter in music, a trendsetter in fashion. He is a trendsetter, regardless if you want to admit it or not. So the fact that he's going to put out a gospel album and probably win Grammys, that's because he's Kanye West. He's a musical genius. When he says or does something or puts out an album, the world tunes in. If anything, you should be thankful of Kanye because he's probably going to get more people to listen to gospel and Christian music. And then the last thing when it comes to subject matter, is he alienating non-Christians? Probably. But when has Kanye not alienated an entire group of people before? But my overall thoughts on the album, I would give it like a 7 out of 10. It's not going to be his best work. It's not going to be his worst work. It would be like mid-level within the nine albums that he's put out. It's definitely better than the one that he just released prior to this, so much so that I don't even remember the name of the album. It's definitely better than Life of Pablo. It's not better than his first four albums. So it's probably like middle to like middle bottom third. And my overall thoughts when it comes to the subject matter and everything that this album is about, I personally enjoy listening to it because I don't think that he's preaching at us so much. The vibe that I'm getting is, I'm listening to Kanye's journey and what he believes is true and how he turned his life around by finding God. And it just happens to be that he's Kanye West, so a lot of people are going to listen. You're listening to him write in his diary about his journey of finding Christ. That's the way that I listen to it, and that's why I personally like the album. So if you heard the album and you didn't necessarily like it the first go around, the second go around, listen to the album from my perspective. Listen to it from he's not trying to tell you what to do. He's just telling you what he went through, and maybe you'll find a different view on the album. But like I said, I definitely give the album some good props. It's definitely better than his last three albums. This album, I personally also believe, is better than Yeezus. Yeezus had to grow on me. This one, not so much. But that ends our first album review, guys. I hope y'all guys enjoyed it. I appreciate you sticking it out if you're still here. If you like the video, please consider smashing that like button. Nah, I'm just kidding. Just click the like button if you like the video. That does help the channel. Please consider leaving a comment. That also helps the channel. That helps videos get recommended to people that aren't subscribed yet. If you like the video, consider subscribing. And like I always say at the end of all of my videos, guys, go out there in the world, love and care for one another, love and care for each other. Let God do the judgment. And I'll see y'all guys on the next video. Peace.